we were 27 kilograms when we put it over on there, so it was like eight pounds over. <laughs> so we were able to take three things out and it was good. It's Elise, and you are watching the Ready to Stare channel, where I bring you plus size fashion, travel, and lifestyle content, both on here and on my blog, readytostare.com. Today, we are coming to you from the stunning Lisbon, Portugal, and we are going to tell you all about the things that we were able to do in only 36 hours. So let's go ahead and dive in. First meal we was at Time Out Market, and even though it's kind of a touristy spot, it is a nice way to try food from a lot of different restaurants all around Lisbon without having to physically go to them. So if you have mobility issues, just go to Time Out Market, get a little sample of stuff. So we are here at Time Out Market in Lisbon. It was the first Time Out Market of its kind. It was born from the journalists who work at Time Out Magazine. They came up with this idea to put the best of Lisbon under one roof, so you have 26 gourmet restaurants, the best steak, the best gelato, the best everything is right here under one roof and you just can try it in this amazing food hall. So that's what we're gonna do. That was a really good central location. It allowed us to walk right from there to the arch um, and to see the water and to go to Pink Street. We are at the famous Pink Streets. It has lots of bars and shops but most notably, the road is pink and there is rainbow umbrellas. So it's kind of really centrally located and close to everything, uh, but the one location that we went to that was kind of out of the way was Ponto Fino. It was beautiful though, it is the one place where I think you absolutely have to go. It's inconvenient to get to. It's on the other side across, uh, you have to take the bridge across from Lisbon, but that allows you to see the sunset and to just have a beautiful overview of Lisbon. Um, you're right on a beach. It's just honestly like stunning. And the, the atmosphere there was also great. The waiters were like incredibly nice and just sweet and funny. Yes, you are ready. Am I ready to suck? You were you were born ready. You were born to suck. You were born to suck. What did you say to her? Born to suck the head. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have to put content rating on this for you too. Oh, God. It's a beautiful sunset. We're having some nice seafood and it's wonderful. And you're looking very much like Carmen San Diego. That's right what now. Kate said. Oh my god. I love this woman to put on my face. It's 
So the one thing that I really wanted to try while I was here was the pastiche de nata. It is the custard treat that they have at dessert. This is one of the must try sweet treats here in Lisbon. I get it now. It is really good. It's like a really flaky crust. And a really soft like custard center. Let's see. Ooh, ooh. So good. So I thought that that was really good. We got one at the Time Out Market and then of course we got one at uh, Bedlam, which is the famous place. Uh, luckily for us, there was a line out the door, but we didn't have to wait in it because while we were waiting in a different line to go see the cathedral, our uh, Tuk Tuk tour guide went in and got them for us and then brought them to us. So that was amazing because no line. So when I was planning this trip, one of my um, amazing followers suggested doing uh, this specific Tuk Tuk tour. She sent me the link on Viator. She said, do the four hour one, ask for this driver. So I was like, okay, I'm trusting you. And she was definitely right. I mean, the hills here are just, there's only so much you can do walking wise, especially when you have more limited mobility like I do. So um, doing the Tuk Tuk tour is like a really great way to go to all the different sites. And there's no way, even though it did cost, you know, for the six of us, it wasn't that reasonable. But if you think about how much time and how many Ubers or how much public transportation you would have had to take, it just saved a lot of time, a lot of energy. And I think in the end, probably money. How's the Tuk Tuk tour going? I think it's going really well. It's a little bit cramped, but other than that, I love being driven around. It's a two passenger princess. Um, and I like not having to walk, so I'm into it. Well, on this trip, we went to two different bookstores. We went to the world's oldest bookstore, which has its little like Guinness Book of World Records like proudly displayed all over. Uh, so we went to the world's oldest operating bookstore. And, you know, I don't think if they didn't have the signs, I would have necessarily known. Um, that there wasn't that much in there that necessarily looked old, but it was really cool to see. Um, and it definitely went back really far. So it was like room after room after room. So that was cool. Um, definitely interesting to see and they did have books in English so I liked to see that and I ended up getting a copy of French Vogue with Beyonce on it. <laughs> and one of the world's most beautiful bookstores is located in the LX factory and I feel like as soon as you walk in it kind of has that like fantasy of like you know Belle and her uh, and Beauty and the Beast and her like bookcases to the ceiling except the ceiling is like at least four floors tall so and then it has like these stairs going up and the sculpture so I could definitely see kind of why it takes your breath away to, to kind of walk in there so that was really interesting visually um, I didn't buy anything there but I was really happy to see it I think my favorite part of the trip was just experiencing a new culture because I didn't know too much about Portugal but I feel like just from the people that we met, even in our short time, we learned a lot about like how friendly people are here and how it's not like overly touristy. It's one of the cheapest places to visit in Europe and it's one of the third safest place in the world to visit. So I, I think I learned about a lot about like what makes Portugal like a really great destination. So I think just overall, this two days really like wet my whistle to come back to Portugal. There's so many other places to see that I would love to to see and um, yeah I think I love the meal um, the sunset meal on the water I think that was probably like my favorite thing I think the biggest thing that I would note is the thing that everybody warns you about which is the hills are really intense like if you think that they're lying they're not they're not exaggerating it is really that awful to walk here uh, so just kind of be prepared know your limits don't be afraid to use uber it's not hard to use here um, and just make sure that you're kind of prepared have water and take breaks because the hills are there's so many hills. <laughs>
of course, if you have more than 36 hours in Lisbon, like you should definitely go to Sintra and lots of places right around Lisbon. But if you only have 36 hours, there is so much to do here in Lisbon. You don't need to leave. You can take a Tuk Tuk tour, see the sights, have these amazing, incredible meals, and just experience this culture of Portugal right here in Lisbon. So that is everything I have to tell you about 36 hours in Lisbon. I hope that you enjoyed it. If there's anything you think I should do when I come back, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, bye.